Alright, I'm still in Thailand on vacation. Uh, I'm uh, still recovering from the flu. Wifey also has the flu. So we are, yeah, we are down together. But anyway, so I want to talk about uh, uh, degradation today. Because, um, you know, um, many people, I see it on Facebook that they talk about battery degradation. And, you know, I believe that they, uh, many of them, they use the wrong method of uh, measuring it. So I haven't made a video about this. I, mean, I talk about this many times, but I haven't really made a video, like a specific video about how you should measure uh, degradation. So like the most common mistake people do is that they look at the range that you had when the car was new, and then they compare it to the range like after one year or something. And then they figure, okay, so you had 400 kilometers in the beginning. It, drop to 395 so you had only a five kilometer drop uh, in range after one year like oh yeah that's fantastic well you that one is almost useless you know they cannot use it and i'll explain why because um, tesla will change the algorithm of how the car estimates range uh, they they will just do that without warning and they usually don't notify you anyway so, so suddenly like you, you receive an update and then suddenly you might lose some range or you might even gain some range. That's what it looks like. But in reality, you still have the same uh, number of kilowatt hours available. And then the, the, the system will you know, try to estimate how, like, how many kilometers you get out of that one. Uh, so obviously, yes, if you, uh, if you measure it at T1 and then at T2, uh, you had several updates and the algorithm changed then you cannot compare those two numbers anymore uh, Another problem is that uh, there is this uh, hidden capacity at 100% So I've seen this many times before in, uh, in the previous cars that uh, when you charge the car to 100% uh, It would still keep charging for some reason, uh, but the range doesn't increase anymore and then when you start driving uh, you can drive for a while and the range doesn't decrease but the kilowatt hours consume goes up and then suddenly you start losing uh, you know, kilometers as you're supposed to do but um, that is with a fresh car fresh battery but eventually after a while it won't be like that anymore when you charge to full it stops and then when you start driving it starts dropping like it should so that means that there's some hidden capacity there um, and uh, another problem is that um, over time the BMS might be uncalibrated so that means that uh, the BMS the battery management system does not know where the maximum and minimum points are anymore and then you know, like what happened to me is that uh, the car stopped with 14 kilometers left so uh, you know it didn't really know where rock bottom was so um, uh, that means that uh, in reality um, you cannot trust the hundred percent uh, I mean, what hundred percent might not be hundred percent, you know, or you you cannot trust that you will get be able to discharge it to zero. It might stop before zero. Uh, and the last problem is that um, uh, when I switch on range mode, uh, it depends, of course, like the state of charge and everything. But uh, suddenly, I might gain one or two more kilometers of range, and then when I switch off range mode again, then I lose that. Uh, it's just the way the car estimates uh, range based on range mode on and off. And uh, this again might change over the software updates. So that means that if you have a T1 reference and a T2 reference, they might have completely different parameters. And that, so that's why you cannot use these two uh, time, like, you know, these two to, to estimate range, I mean, estimate degradation. Uh, that is again, you know, okay, so that was the most common, uh, like, uh, uh, was the most common mistake. Uh, another very common mistake is that uh, people look at uh, the consumed kilowatt hours since they charge or whatever, but the problem is that they, they look at this over several days or something. Uh, and the problem with that is that, you know, you, let's say you charge it to 100%, and then you just drive a little bit, and then you park, and then you go to work, and you come back, and then you drive home and then you stay home and then uh, the problem with that is that um, while the car is, uh, is parked it will uh, consume a little bit of energy to to keep the car alive we call it vampire drain 
and um, uh, that is not measured in the trip meter and also if you preheat the car that is also not measured in the trip meter and yeah so uh, that means that uh, it will appear like you have less available energy so it's, it's again incorrect um, another uh, problem is <laughs> many people they 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 maybe so they do something right you know they they measure how much like energy you can uh, get out of the car or maybe they look at some other but they 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 find this kilowatt hour number uh, from somewhere right uh, and then let's say they they have a um, an 85 kilowatt hour pack and then uh, somehow they measured 70 kilowatt hours so like okay so I've, I've lost 15 kilowatt hours because I'm supposed to have 85 kilowatt hours, right? No, that is again not the case because uh, every Tesla, uh, the, the number that it, it shows you, you know, 85, 60, 100, whatever, that is not what you get. That is like just a, like, a, like a branded kilowatt hour. So you have to actually know uh, somewhere uh, how much. So for instance, the 85 has about 76 kilowatt hours available and then uh, the 90 pack has about 80 81 kilowatt hour I just have to know that there's a method to measure it actually um, another mistake people do is that they measure a too small like span in the in the state of charge uh, and then they try to extrapolate the rest so for instance they charge to 100% no let, let's say they charge to 90% and then they drive it down to 70%, so they only consume 20%. And then they use that one, uh, maybe let's say during that 20% uh, frame, they consume uh, uh, 15 kilowatt hours or something. And then they multiply it by five, you know, but that is not correct uh, because there, there can be some uh, errors in that. And then when you multiply, extrapolate it like that, you also multiply the error by five. For in this example so that is also uh, not the correct way in my opinion uh, another uh, like uh, mistake is that uh, you look at the kilowatt hour added when you charge the car so for instance at the supercharger you know for instance you, you arrive with almost zero battery and then you charge 100% and then it says you added 80 kilowatt hours during the charging session you're like okay well that means that I have 80 kilowatt hours available no um, Unfortunately, <laughs> that 80 kilowatt hour, uh, it, the number is usually way too high. So uh, it might have added, I mean, it, it might have like included heating in the car or some cooling or something, auxiliary, something that the car consume while charging also. So you cannot look at that number either. And uh, okay, what about, you know, um, if you, you have a charger at home and you have your own circuit break and you have your own like uh, um, what you call it a meter uh, so you can uh, measure how many kilowatt hour you drawn for the wall right well again uh, there is also a problem with that method because um, there is this charging loss in in the charging process uh, so if you look at for instance uh, an 85 pack you're supposed to have let's say um, 75 kilowatt hour available uh, so you charge it up but you actually charge maybe 82 kilowatt hours so that means that there is this uh, uh, 7 kilowatt hour of charging loss that went into the charger went into heat into the cables and whatever uh, and of course I heard some people claim that well, this is the only right way to do it well, I, I disagree because, um, you know, there's this guy, he claims that, well, this is the way to do it because, uh, you know, the, the meter doesn't lie. That you, you can make this reference point a T1 and then you'd make another reference point a T2. Um, but, there's always a but, yes, <laughs> which is that uh, age batteries will have higher internal resistance. And that means that the charging efficiency, in, uh, this is my theory, should uh, decrease over time because the battery gets uh, older more resistance means more more heat so um, um, let's say that uh, in the beginning uh, the the charging efficiency was 90% and then but at, that was at T1 at T2 
it dropped to 89% only. So then again, and you don't know how much, unfortunately, because the heat loss is, is not displayed anywhere. So, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> back to the point then, how do you measure it correctly? Well, uh, the problem with measuring uh, capacity is that um, you will get different results almost every time. Uh, you know, uh, measuring capacity is almost like like this. You know, you're trying to measure the length of a rubber band, and uh, it depends how hard you stretch it. Al almost like that. Um, but anyway, uh, so what you should do to measure uh, capacity is that you have to charge the car to 100%. Slowly charge it to 100% until it stops. You cannot, I mean, it's going to be freaking slow towards the end, but you have to wait until it stops. If you, uh, uh, if you stop before, then you don't know whether it was 100% or was 99.5% or 90%, or not, maybe 99, but 99%. And that one extra percent, when you start, you know, crunching the numbers, will add up. Uh, um, and uh, also, uh, when you start, uh, when you're done, then you have to start driving right away. Uh, and you have to slowly drive it close to zero. But you shouldn't drive it, like, until the car stops. I'll come back to that, by the way. But you have to drive it slowly. That's the thing. Uh, and you cannot have any stops because if you if you well you can have any stops just a P but if you stop too long and just like, keep it un, like unused then you know it will draw this um, energy to keep the system alive the the, the vampire draw uh, so you kind of have to drive it almost non-stop uh, and also you have to avoid hard acceleration because uh, when you discharge the battery hard. Um, you, you pull out a lot of power, right? um, you will have significant heat loss and the problem is that that heat loss is not counted in the trip meter. Uh, but also you should avoid too many steep hills, uphills, downhills, uh, because that will have, then you have to regen significant uh, like part of the trip. Uh, that also generates a little bit of heat. So you, basically what you want is to avoid too much heat. So you want to drive as smooth, as even as possible and also kind of slow because if you drive too fast you have higher power output and that means more uh, more heat loss so um, uh, in general if you drive very fast you will get less energy out of the battery versus if you drive slower um, uh, start and stop position doesn't really matter because um, uh, yeah you, you will have to spend all that energy in the battery in the end Anyway, uh, so and also that means that elevation change doesn't matter at least not too much. So you know, uh, if start and end point is not the same, that, that no big deal. Uh, and then what you do though after you've been driving this <laughs> for the whole day or whatever is that you look at the trip meter at how many kilowatt hours you have consumed because in the end that's what matters. That's what you care about is how many kilowatt hour you can get out of a fully charged battery. Uh, and then you. You take that one and you have to compare it if you have a reference point when the car was new or you can compare it to like how it's supposed to be on similar batteries. Uh, yeah, uh, sim similar batteries. So, uh, But you know, you cannot compare this with... Uh, uh, some people, they read the BMS uh, info and you know, the BMS will tell you that, well, okay, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to have uh, 85 kilowatt hours available. Unfortunately, that is is not accurate, like I mentioned before. Uh, and um, right at the end, I would say that okay, so you know, you, I told you, you know, drive it almost until it stops, but uh, don't drive it all the way to stop because then you will have some problem. But uh, technically, you should drive it until it stops because uh, you don't know where the I mean the bottom. Um, like in like you know in the beginning when the, the car is fresh then it's it it has this hidden buffer that will be eaten up over time so um um the the only correct way is actually to, to drive it until it stops oh okay well uh the, <laughs> it's funny because uh, the, the battery is almost running out now so i'm gonna stop now but uh yeah so yes you have to 
uh, stop before. That's what I recommend. So you get like a a, a close um, like estimation. It's not it's not always hundred percent correct, but it's close enough. Yeah. So I hope this was useful for you. <laughs> it might have made it make more confusing, but um, yeah, that's at least the way I believe it's the correct way to measure battery degradation. All right, so um, that's it done for now. Yeah, bye bye.